And in case you guys haven't, like, seen her hair yet, she was born with a head full of hair. Like, look at all that hair. Hey, Mountain Family. How's it going? So today, Andy is one week old, so it's time to do an update. So when Andy was born, she was 7 pounds and 11 ounces. And I'm not exactly sure how much weight she has gained since then. We haven't had an appointment yet because Dev and I, we've kind of been in the middle of a life change. Because, you know, having a baby wasn't life changing enough. We just had to throw something else in there. Devin got his coal mining job back. If you don't know, if you're new to my channel, Devin was a coal miner. He got laid off and that's when he became a truck driver. Well, they called him back. So he just started on, today's Tuesday? Yesterday. He just started yesterday. And so since he works during the day, he can't exactly take us to appointments. So as soon as our refund money from our taxes come in, we're immediately buying a new car and she is immediately going to have a checkup with her doctor. I was told before we were discharged from the hospital that she's lost 8% of her body weight. I really think that she has gained since then. I'm pretty sure she's either at or above her birth weight. I just can't tell for sure just yet. She is an excellent nurser. Out of all of my kids, Andy has been the easiest. I only have a little bit of pain whenever she first latches on and then that's it. Everything is fine. She's also a really good sleeper. I think last night we went to bed around midnight was our last feeding and she woke up around 3 for a feed and then um, she woke up around I think 7.30. 7.30 or 8 for another feed. So she does really, really good. And then during the day, it's like every two, three hours, she wants to nurse. They told me at the hospital that she is just a little bit jaundiced. It's not enough to affect her waking up to nurse or anything like that. She doesn't act like it's bothering her at all, but she does have a touch of it. And I'll show you like, I don't know if you can see. She's just a little bit yellow. You can't really see. <laughs> oh man. She's just a little bit yellow like around her face and her eyes are just a little bit yellow. It's really not that bad. Oh, I moved you, I know. That makes you upset. Mommy, I was comfy. Miss Andy over here, I'm sorry girl, I'm about to get personal, but she is a pooping machine. I kid you not, I am changing a poopy diaper every single time that I go to change her. I can't wait to find out how much weight she's gained because I know she's getting enough. I can hear her gulping milk whenever she nurses and she's got plenty of dirty diapers. So I'm just like really curious. I wanna know how much she weighs. She also likes to be swaddled, but not like tightly, just like a blanket around her arms, just enough to keep her nice and warm. But I I have to be careful with Andy because if you get her too warm she will just sleep and sleep and sleep but if she's too cold then she won't sleep at all so Miss Goldilocks here has to have everything just right in order for her to sleep good so far the only problem that Andy has ever had is not keeping her body temperature up and that was just for the first like 36 hours maybe that she was here. It wasn't even like a full two days. It was like a day and a half. She was struggling to keep her body temperature up and it's probably because she was born a little bit early like her sisters were. But that has long since resolved itself and that's really the only problem that she's had so far. Now I'm just gonna give you guys like a bunch of little fun facts about her. Andy is our smallest baby in length. She was seven pounds, 11 ounces and 20 inches long at birth. Carly was 20 and three fourths of an inch at birth and she weighed seven pounds, 12 ounces. And McKinley was our longest baby at 21 inches and she weighed 7 pounds 5 ounces. So she's about as big as Carly was when she was born. She's just like almost an inch shorter, like barely, <laughs> and one ounce lighter. And in case you guys haven't like seen her hair yet, she was born with a head full of hair. Like look at all that hair. Show off your pretty hair. Say it's so pretty. Do you guys like see how in the light it looks kind of like strawberry blondish, but in areas it looks brown? Like does anybody else see that? Like it looks kind of brown, but it kind of looks like she's got a hair treatment right before birth. <laughs> That's what all the nurses were saying. All the nurses were like, oh my gosh, it looks like she's had a hair treatment right before birth. If you guys have seen Carly's hair in the sunlight, it is red. It doesn't look red in fluorescent light. Fluorescent light makes my girl's hair look a completely different color than it does in natural light. But Carly's hair is red. And Kinley is like a strawberry blonde. You can't really see much of the red, again, in fluorescent light. But you can see it in natural light. It's, it's there, but it's just very strawberry 
Strawberry Blonde, and I think she's gonna be in Auburn, which is actually like really funny because I have two sisters on my dad's side. I'm the redhead, my sister who is younger than me by two years, Chandler is an Auburn, and my sister who is younger than me by five years is Strawberry Blonde. I just thought that was like super funny. <laughs> Her umbilical cord has still not fallen off. It's not even like a little bit coming off. It's still pretty in there. It's starting to get a little bit loose around the edges, but it's nowhere near coming off. Overall, Andy is just a very content child. She really only does like one of two things. She's either asleep or she's awake and wanting to eat. There is no like awake periods yet where she's just awake and looking around. That doesn't really happen yet, which is probably why you guys won't get like a really good shot of her face or anything like that because I really do want to show her off. But if I wake her up, she's going to like scream her head off and want to nurse. And I don't want to show her off if she's going to scream. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see. I bet you, I don't know if you can. But you see how she's got her tongue out a little bit? Oh. <laughs> when she was born, she had her tongue out like that. Like just a little bit, like, like just a little bit. And she still does it. Like every single time she sleeps, her tongue is out. Every time she's awake, even if it's just a little bit, her tongue is out. Her daddy thinks it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> he, he like flicks it all the time. <laughs> And she just, you know, sticks her tongue back in her mouth and makes a face at him, but <laughs> that's about the extent of it. Just to touch base a little bit on how Carly and Kenley are adjusting to their new sister, Carly is absolutely fascinated with her. She loves her. She wants to hold her all the time. She wants to peek into her play yard all the time. She's, like, very, very fascinated with her sister. Poor Kenley could care less. Like, she does, she does not care. She doesn't really pay her any attention or any mind. She'll peek into her play yard every now and then just to, you know, peek at her, but she's not near as fascinated as Carly. I love it. I think it's so cute. Since I'm already here, I'm going to give you guys an update on me and how I'm doing postpartum. I was going to make this like a whole separate video, but I thought about it and I realized that I don't have enough information to make a whole other video, so I'll just do it here. When I had her, I had no tearing, so I didn't have that issue. Pretty much the only issue that I've had is TMI, constipation, and my back is hurting me. I got an epidural because they induced me, and if you all know because you've been on my channel for a while, you all know I hate Pitocin. So I got an epidural, but he failed it three times before he finally got it right. So my back has been killing me like ever since. So that's one of my biggest problems being postpartum is my back, oh my gosh. It's like a constant ache back there. And sometimes it gets so bad, when I stand up, I get shooting, knifing pain. Like, so bad that one of my legs will go weak. It's really, really strange. And my back does not stop aching. He told me that that would go away. I don't know how true that is, but that's what he said. And I have every intention of talking to my OB about it when I see her next. Because, seriously, my back, it hurts. I've also lost about 17 pounds since Andy was born. I think my top pregnancy weight with her was 197 and I'm now exactly 180. That's like one of the bummers about being pregnant for me is I gain a bunch of weight. But I do want to work it off. I just don't know when. With McKinley, I started working off the baby weight when she was like, I think three or four weeks old. It was something like that. It was like really soon after she was born. With Andy, I just don't know when I'm going to work off the rest. I can't decide when I'm when that's gonna happen and I'm not really in like a huge rush to do that really right now I just want to enjoy my girls and enjoy Andy being so little and I just don't want to focus on losing the baby weight just yet I'm also going to stand up for you guys and show you guys my one week postpartum belly but before I do I haven't really like talked about this yet I talked about this some in my pregnancy vlogs and like my second trimester I think around like 20 ish weeks 19 21 ish weeks I started talking about this in case you don't know I do have an umbilical hernia and actually I talked about this with my OB and she felt the umbilical hernia and she was like yeah it's about I um, hope I can get this right it's about that big it's like a softball in my abdomen and I have a significant diasis recti it's when your muscles and your abdomen separate usually from childbirth and mine is pretty significant it's like three fingers I think I can't remember what she said. Was it three? Anyway, she didn't like do a full evaluation because it's not her area of expertise, but she tried to give me like an idea. But that's why my belly looks the way that it does. I used to be like super self-conscious about it, which is why I didn't even show belly pictures with my shirt up until I was 19 weeks. But I've kind of grown over the course of documenting my pregnancy and documenting her and that whole process. I've kind of grown to just love my body the way that it is. I mean, it's carried the lives of 
with my beautiful children inside of it. And I just didn't come out unscathed. <laughs> like I came out of that whole pregnancy process with a diastasis recti and an umbilical hernia. And that's just the way that it is. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys my one week postpartum belly now. So this is my belly, one week postpartum. This is from this side. Straight ahead and this side. And I will show you guys my hernia. It's about right there, she said, to about right there. It's about, this is just what she said, okay? She said it's about like that. It's about that big. It's about right there. And I have muscle separation right all the way down. It's hard to like really see it when I stand up because all of my muscles are being engaged. But when I sit back or sit down and my muscles are more relaxed, you can really see this. It's like significant. And you can like, oh, the sun. But let's turn this way. Yeah. You can see like how this dips in, how this is very soft and this is very hard. That's the hernia. I wonder if I can still get like you can't really see it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, but anyway, that's my belly. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, my links are down below. And I will see you guys later in a new vlog. Bye, guys.